Hello and welcome to another episode of the StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Matt, Catherine, and I are going to talk about short stories. So we've actually picked and read three different short stories in order to discuss them, and they are all available online. So we'll put the links in the show notes so you can go find them, read them before we talk, after we talk, whatever you like. <laughs> And the first story we're going to discuss is titled Sonny Liston Takes the Fall by Elizabeth Baer. So Matt, I'm going to let you introduce the story since this is the one you picked out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so story by Elizabeth Baer was originally published in Apex Magazine. I found it in an anthology though. Um, I think it was a science fiction and fantasy like speculative fiction anthology. Um, so I like it because it's speculative fiction on a known event. So some people call this like alternate history. Um, and I like this particular story because the narrator calls himself the soul of Las Vegas or the warden of Sin City or the genius of Las Vegas. I really like the point of view. I think that's why I picked it. Um, and also the language is beautiful. Um, so it's a short story. It's separated into like 10 sections. And it's about whether or not in the fight between Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston, Sonny Liston actually took a fall. So it's kind of like a inside perspective on it, a fictional inside perspective. Hmm. So are you familiar with boxing history? Is that part of the appeal? No, no. In fact, like I had to go look up a bunch of stuff when I was reading it because I really wanted to know like which part is true and which part isn't true. And I think that's part of the appeal of it because you, you never really get Sonny Liston's perspective, right? And this mm -hmm. is told from a, um, from a guy named Jackie, right? He's the narrator. Um, and he calls himself like the genius of Las Vegas. So presumably he's like some mm -hmm. either big mob guy or maybe there's some, you know, um, something magical or weird going on here. But um, he seems to have a, a really unique take on it because he knows the truth of the matter, you know, and what that truth is could be different to, to every person. But at least from Jackie's perspective, um, Sonny Liston lost. He didn't take the fall. Right. So what did you find out when you Googled it? Because I actually had that idea, but then I didn't follow through on it. <laughs> Catherine, did yeah, you I mean, look it up? Here. No, I didn't. Okay. All right. So fill us in, Matt. <laughs> well, I, I just looked up that like these fights did happen, right? There was two fights between Cassius Clay and Sonny Liston. And um, I, I think all the, the facts are true, but you never really get Sonny Liston's perspective on it. So... Um, I didn't look too hard into it, and I'm not a huge, like, you know, boxing history aficionado. Mm -hmm. I don't even really watch boxing. I just liked how uh, the narrator told it. Mm -hmm. So is there a controversy about whether or not Sonny Liston took the fall? I don't know. It's There's a lot of speculation. Okay. There's a lot of speculation. It's one of those things that I think more... Um, oh, you broke you up can't a really, bit. Like, suss out the truth. Could you oh, say sorry. that again? Well, more books have been written about this one event, and more books continually will be written because it's a famous landmark event in boxing history. So I don't know if there's, if anybody really knows the tr truth. Mm hmm Yeah, it, yeah. The speculative piece of it is interesting in rewriting, mm -hmm. rewriting history from the, it's not even really from the perspective of the loser, sorry, Sonny, because as you say, we don't really get his perspective. It's all through this Jackie's right. eyes, through the narrator's eyes. Um, Catherine, do you yeah. want to say anything about it just generally or, or the true fiction piece of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I thought that they were, I didn't really get that the story was really about Sonny Liston. I thought it was definitely about um, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, and about his rise versus Sonny Liston's fall. So mm -hmm. um, I was fascinated by, again, the narrator, like you were saying, Matt, he was he was fascinating because mm -hmm. he has this whole thing with the racehorses and then he's working in and he just obviously has this idea and opinion of himself that then colors and biases everything that he sees, which is fascinating throughout the story. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting point because um, the title is Sonny Liston Takes the Fall, and they're, they're really two sides of the same coin. So is it about Sonny Liston's fall, or is it about Muhammad Ali's 
rise. And this narrator does make a point of calling Muhammad Ali, you know, he talks about his conscientious objector stand. He talks about Cassius Clay becoming Muhammad Ali. And mm-hmm. doesn't he call him like a defender or something? Ali is a symbol. He's, he calls him the king. Yeah, he's the king. So, yeah. Sonny the draft Liston, dodging political activist, lay preacher, Muhammad Ali. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which might be a little bit derogatory, you know, it depends on your perspective on, on those things. And yet Muhammad Ali became a hero. So even though he was blacklisted for a time because of the draft and all that, he mm-hmm. became a hero of black manhood while Sonny Liston became sort of a poor, lonely alcoholic from the way this story portrays him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they talk a lot about him looking down. He never meets anyone's eyes. He's always looking down. And then the last right. line of the story, Ben Muhammad Ali, he never once looks down. It brings it kind of full circle from the beginning where they talk about Sonny Liston never meeting his eyes all the way to, you know, Muhammad Ali never looking down. So... Right. right. So what is the theme of the story then? The theme of the story? Yeah, is it power? Is it manhood? Is it um, self, like owning yourself and not being put down by society? It's. I think that meeting the eyes is a really important piece of it. Mm. I don't know, I kind of see it turning the heroic idea of heroism on its head too in a way because Sonny Liston is almost the hero because he takes the fall Um, at the end it's a different fall than what you're anticipating but he he his idea or his heroism I guess throughout the story is depicted in a completely anti-heroic way like the person that he is versus Muhammad Ali and yet Sonny Liston's the hero so I don't know if that contributes to theme but um, that's kind of where I was seeing it going right well it definitely contributes to theme because why would the author Elizabeth Bear pick Sonny Liston as the protagonist as opposed to Muhammad Ali you know the story is about Sonny Liston but it juxtaposes Sonny Liston with Muhammad Ali. So we see these two sides to that coin, one falling, the other rising, uh, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. So. And certainly greatness is one of the themes because there is the racehorse analogy with charismatic and the triple crown. Mm -hmm. Right what it takes, the price of greatness. Mm-hmm. Courage. Mm-hmm. And also lying, right? Because, I mean, supposedly, Sonny Liston's lying to Jackie's face in the, in the whole story, right? A lot of it is kind of like Jackie narrating. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't really see that much of their conversation, but... Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's almost a reflective piece where the narrator is exploring this issue through and about Sonny Liston instead of mm-hmm. with him. He's kind of a a figurehead, but low instead of on a pedestal, you know. He's a means right. to an end instead of the end itself. And um, it's interesting that the jockey, Antley, who saved his horse... He held the broken charismatic up with his shoulders in his own two hands until the veterinarians arrived. Between Antley and the surgeons, they saved the colt because Antley took that fall. Nobody mm-hmm. could save Antley, who was dead himself within two years from a drug overdose. So can we draw a parallel between Antley, the jockey, and Liston, and then yeah. charismatic, the horse, and Muhammad Ali? Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, I guess she's saying that Muhammad Ali never would have been Muhammad Ali if Sonny Liston didn't lose that fight. Right. right? Like you right. need each other. You can't be one without the other. You need both sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. So greatness requires, you know, you have to stand on the shoulders of those you defeat or those who come before you or, you know, depends on mm-hmm. your type of greatness. And in this case where it's all competitive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's a really interesting point. Yeah. Hmm. He takes the and fall and he saves the king. Yep. I think mm -hmm. we should talk about the descriptive devices in this because like Matt was saying in the beginning, like this is a really beautiful piece language wise. Mm -hmm. Like the way that he describes things and the imagery that he brings in is or she brings in, but through the narrator Jackie, mm -hmm. um, is is really interesting. <laughs> like it's an interesting narrative device and then also the way the description works. Right. So why don't you give us an example of one? Um, I mean, we could just go from the second paragraph. It was Christmas Eve, 1970, and Sonny Liston was about the furthest thing you could imagine from a handsome man. He had a furrowed brow and downcast hound dog prisoner eyes that would, wouldn't would meet mine, and the matching furrows on each side of his broad, flat, flat nose ran down to a broad, flat mouth under a pencil-thin mustache that was already out of fashion six years ago when he was still king of the world. So it's just a, it's a narrative device that brings you in gives you exactly the time the date his appearance and everything but it it also gives you jackie's opinion of him in one fell swoop mm -hmm. <laughs> and i just thought it was really fascinating because it continues to do that throughout the whole thing like every time it describes anything you get the flavor of jackie as well as this like conversational tone which is really cool right which is the beauty of using this narrator as character so you get instead of getting a neutral narrative voice, kind of an authorial narrative voice, you get Jackie as narrator and also as POV, giving you that perspective on everything, his take and his, you know, yeah. his spin mm -hmm. on events and his judgments as well. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what um, uh, in The Great Gatsby, that's what Nick Carraway does. That's why we have a first person narrator who's an observer and a witness. It's in order to give us those judgments mm -hmm. and that p particular perspective, because then the narrator character is placed in relationship to the events and the characters instead of being outside of them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have no have reason to... to doubt who Jackie is in this story. I was just going to say, like, you have no reason to doubt who Jackie or that De Jackie's telling the truth either, right? But then again, you don't know that, right? Because so it's all like his opinion about the mm -hmm. about Sonny Liston and his opinion about racehorsing that kind of colors who Sonny Liston is. Mm. So I, I thought that it was really well written, but my favorite thing is the point of view character like the narrator because it's uh, like I knew about the fight I knew about the fight between Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston I'm not really like a big fan of boxing so it's not something that I've dug into that much but for some reason uh, that event took on like a new light for me I became interested in it because of the way Jackie tells the story mm -hmm. I think that's really what what connected me to it Cool. Catherine, what were your first impressions or, or <laughs> not necessarily first, what were your impressions of Sunny Liston Takes the Fall? Oh, gosh. Um, I actually had to read it a couple times before I really understood what it was trying to say. Um, but I, I too really love the narrator. I think it's really cool how um, it's, it's not, it's a completely different perspective. It's not Sunny Liston's story. It's Jackie's story. Um, about Sonny Liston and um, just that separation between the author and the narrator and having that narrative character and the narrative voice was really cool. Mm -hmm. It is definitely an interesting narrator. He, um, well, the story is written by a woman who is white, correct? Mm -hmm. And she has a narrator who is a man who is also white who's got a very interesting voice and he says, so <laughs> we're jumping right into this. We're going deep right away. <laughs> but since we're talking about the narrator and the story, what the heck? Um, so obviously Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali are black and the narrator says that 
Muhammad Ali was the way and the path man, and they marked him for sacrifice because he was a warrior god, a black Muslim Moses come to lead his people out of Egypt land. And then he says, go ahead and curl your lip. White man born in the 19th century, reborn in 1905 as the genius of the Mississippi of the West. What do I know about the black experience? And he goes on to address this by saying, I am my city and I contain multitudes. I'm the African-American airman at Nellis Air Force Base, and I'm the black neighborhoods near D Street that can't keep a supermarket, and I'm Cartier Street, and I'm Northtown, and I'm Las Vegas, baby. And it doesn't matter a bit what you see when you look at my face, because Sonny Liston died here, and he's buried here in the palm of my hand, and I'm Sonny Liston too, wronged and wronging. He's in here, boiling and bubbling away. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a story before where the author separates him or herself from the narrator, creating a narrative character, and then separates the narrator character from the subject protagonist of the story in this way, and then addresses it directly, just like, bam, here it <laughs> right. is, deal yeah. with it. Here we go. You know? yeah. Yeah. And it's real punchy like that. Like, what you just read is, is a whole scene in the story. Mm-hmm. Like, they're separated by numbers, and that's number 10, basically, you read almost all of it Mm -hmm. and so it's really like impactful because every sentence every paragraph just kind of hits you Mm -hmm. it does and i realized reading it aloud too before when i read it i just read it in my head this really should be read aloud because of the punchiness because of the rhythm of the language and that narrator's voice is so strong and so rich and the the sentence structure lends itself to being read aloud Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, I, I know there is dialogue between Jackie and Sonny, but it's mm-hmm. almost a soliloquy the way he's doing it. You know, the dialogue is, is really spread throughout of it. It's one conversation, right? And there's maybe, what, five to ten lines of, of dialogue in the whole story, and the rest of it is just his soliloquy between the lines of dialogue. Right. Mm-hmm. It's pretty amazing. Um, there was this movie called The, the Libertine with Johnny Depp. And he mm. opens as this character uh-huh. in a black room, sitting in a chair, just giving a soliloquy to the audience. And it reminds me of this. Like, this story is is like that, you know, in the short story form. It's really cool. It's mm-hmm. like a whole speech. Mm-hmm. It is cool. I have that movie. I'll have to watch it again now. It's been, <laughs> it's been quite a while. That's an impressive really movie, though. Movie. Yeah, it is. So... Do either of you want to talk about this question of the white one woman writing a black, a white man who's telling the story of black men in America? We don't have to go big on the, on the race question, but it is an interesting narrative choice. Yeah. I mean, she definitely pulls it off. Um, Mm -hmm. But I, I guess it takes a lot of empathy as a writer to, put yourself in that character's shoes and then also to have empathy through that character's eyes with Sonny Liston is just really remarkable. It is. And I, I wondered too, as I read this story and saw that the author was a white woman, like would I ever write this story? I don't have an interest in boxing. So I think if you feel deeply about any character you can write any story regardless of your background but I don't think I feel deeply about Sonny Liston or Muhammad Ali so it made me wonder what she saw in that situation as a writer that compelled her to write this story and create Mm -hmm. this narrative around this piece of American history it's you know race and gender aside You've got to care about it in order to write it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it was, for a lot of people, I think, a really pivotal moment in history, right? That fight was something people still talk about. So maybe that's what captured her imagination was just like that moment. And, you know, you read it and it's not really about boxing, right? It's about two boxers. Mm-hmm. Sure. But she talks about, um, or the narrator talks about horse racing and mm-hmm. um, what... Muhammad Ali meant to the American people and all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She never really talks about them 
as boxers or you know how they right. trained or what kind of fighters they they were they was always it was always about like what kind of man they are or what kind of men they are how they changed mm-hmm. and how right. they affected the people around them i mean mm-hmm. even like um i think i'm in section 11 like she even has sunny to say that he's an embarrassment to the black man like so they're acknowledging this whole community right. And um, I think thematically, that is what I think drove her to write this story. It's not so much about, like you said, it's not really about boxing. It's more about the themes. Of, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of this fight, you know, as Muhammad Ali is, is the savior child. He's the one leaving, leading them <laughs> out of Egypt, right? He's the, that king. They even talk about him being the king. Um, and so I think it's just that theme of, they're almost helping each other in a way without even realizing it. And he, Sonny listens saying, I took that fall. I, I made that decision. You know, he's, mm-hmm. he's the king. And that, that was the choice that I made. Um, so it's, it's interesting, not really about boxing so much as about the community around it. Right. So what made this, what made you care about this story? If it's not the boxing itself and, for me, it's not even Sonny Liston or Muhammad Ali as mm-hmm. actual historical figures. So what what makes this story worth reading if you aren't interested in boxing history? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all, you know, as people, like human uh, students of human psychology, right? And so what really drew me in, though, was I'm getting an inside look at these events that I don't really understand the significance of them. I mean, especially initially, because I didn't know much about the history behind it. Mm-hmm. I did more research afterwards, but um, it's just like, here's a person at the center of this who can tell you what it's all about, you know? So you see it from that perspective. It's like the the, the door opening, kind mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. That's what pulled me in. Yeah. So did Sonny Liston take the fall. I mean, there's the title is Sonny Liston takes the fall, so we must assume he took mm-hmm. the fall. But there's the fall in the ring, and then there's the fall the narrator Jackie asks him to take, and then after this he actually takes a fall and dies. I mean, not he didn't necessarily die because he fell, but he was found on the mm-hmm. floor, a metaphorical fall. So, in a sense, there are three different falls in the story. Does the story actually determine that he took the first fall? Is it only referring to the fall of death? How do you guys read the fall in this? So I thought they were pretty clear. Like, the narrator actually says, um, so Sonny Liston says in dialogue, I took that fall. And then um, Jackie says later in his narration that, he lost that Sonny didn't take the fall he lost but now he's saying he took the fall so that he can take the credit so they actually like say it in there so yeah it's a triple entendre (laughs) but so he took the fall but he didn't take the fall he lost but he well so taking the fall (laughs) is like losing on purpose right right Mm -hmm. so Sonny Liston saying I lost on purpose and Jackie is saying no you didn't you got beat right which would right doesn't that imply that Sonny Liston claimed he took a fall in order to deny that he got beat? Yeah, yeah. So then the, whether or not he actually took a fall is still... I guess he went down, whether it was intentional or just mm-hmm. a matter of losing, right? Right. But then there's the question of the mob forcing him to take the fall, in which right. case it might not really be his fault like it could be a show of strength to protect yourself and your family from the mob by taking the fall as opposed to a show of weakness and corruption take you know so it's really yeah. much more convoluted than it seems at first mm-hmm. yeah and again Jackie's the narrator so Jackie thinks that he lost the fight and Sonny's saying no I took the fall because the mob wanted me to and Jackie's mm-hmm. saying I don't believe you um well, but, and he's, you know to go yeah Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, Jackie says straight out that he was he was actually supposed to beat him. He was supposed to kill him. And so then when Sonny Liston says, no, I took that fall. And then at mm-hmm. the end, you know, Jackie says he did take, he took, takes the fall over and over and over again. He saves the king. Like what he's saying is I didn't do what they asked me to do. I took the fall in order to save Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a different kind of taking the fall. It's more of a sacrifice 
of self Mm -hmm. rather than being told you have to take the fall because somebody else wants you to do it. So what he's saying, regardless of whether or not the mob paid him to take the fall, is I took that fall, meaning I saved that man's life, Um, Mm. I think, in, in my view. In the very end. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. to bring it full circle at the end, she says, and so he takes the fall, Sonny Liston, again and again and again, like John Henry driving steel until his heart burst. So it's like, to go back to what Alita said about the mm-hmm. hidden, the layers of meaning, is that his mm-hmm. whole life was a fall, right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if he took, if he took the fall as sacrifice in order to allow the rise of Muhammad Ali... And then he continued to pay for it throughout his life, going to jail and drinking too much and stuff. That makes a lot of sense with the sections about Muhammad Ali and also being a champion. And about the racehorse with the jockey falling over and holding the horse up until they get over the finish line. So So do you think Jackie, Jackie says, I'm the city. Mm -hmm. Right. But I had this feeling as I read it that Jackie was death or a harbinger of death, if not death Mm. himself as well, because he he basically announces Sonny Liston's final fall, which is his death to him. So it almost felt like a visitation. Did Mm. either of you have that kind of sense from Jackie's role? (laughs) I didn't get the Grim Reaper sense, but I did get the feeling like when he says I'm the soul of Las Vegas, I almost took that literally. I was yeah. like, okay, you're the spirit of Las Vegas. Yes. Mm. That that I that interpretation I, I could really see. Um I didn't get the sense of the Grim Reaper aspect, mm-hmm. but it could just be like, you know, a different version of the Grim Reaper that's not so on the nose in your face about it. Right. You know. Doesn't have the scythe or anything, but he says I'm the soul of Las Vegas, so he could be some spiritual being or something. Something speculative. Right. Well, and he <laughs> says you have to take one more fall. He wants, mm. you know, trying to see what's, what section that's in. Yeah, it's 11, at the bottom of 11. Okay. Sonny, I said, with that last bit of Dutch courage in me, you're going to have to take another fall. And then in the next section, section 12, when his wife, returning from a holiday visit to her relatives, found his body on January 5th, 11 days after I poured him that drink, maybe a week or so after he died, Sonny Mm -hmm. had needle marks in the crook of his arm, though the coroner's report said heart failure. Can you think of a worse way to kill the man? So there's this very specific timeline, the date he died, Mm -hmm. And back it up, his wife was on vacation, so he'd been dead for about a week. But that was still several days after Jackie's visit to him. So it's almost like Jackie's washing his hands of responsibility for this death. Mm -hmm. Right. On the other hand, he could be the head of the mob in Las Vegas who went to punish him for not killing Muhammad Ali, but for taking a fall and letting Muhammad Ali uh, win. Mm Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the air that I got was very mob bossy. (laughs) Right. Which could also tie into him being a harbinger of death because he wouldn't do it himself. He would send a henchman (laughs) to actually kill Sonny, you know, and in the worst way he can think of, which is... It kind of reminds me of in in a lot of mob boss movies, you know, the, the boss will send the the cronies to do the murders and tell it somebody important. So maybe he respects Sonny enough to do it himself. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But then there are those several days between when he poured him the drink and when mm-hmm. Sonny died. Right. Yeah. You know, unless the conversation drove Sonny to, to shoot up. But then he acknowledges it's a way to kill the man. Mm-hmm. So... Definitely, he took another fall, meaning he he ended up dying for what he had done. Um. <laughs> right. Well, now I it's... wonder if his death was like, if it spurred on something that happened in American history that I'm not necessarily aware of. Well, I think the author is saying it does because section 
12 ends. I mean, it's only about yeah. four sentences says, can you, th and can you think of a worse way to kill the man in the next section 13? On March 8th, 1971, a publicly reviled Muhammad Ali was defeated by Fr Joe Frazier at Madison Square Garden. He had been vilified as a Muslim and a man who wouldn't look down. Three months later, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the conviction, allowing Ali's conscientious objector status to stand. He was a free man. So it's almost the story is setting up Sonny Liston's death as some kind of impetus for Muhammad Ali's continuing ascent. Mm -hmm. Right. And even at the end when he says um, about Muhammad Ali winning the Presidential Medal of Freedom, he says it, he's, she starts the sentence by saying almost 35 years after Sonny Liston died as if that mm -hmm. was why. Right. Hmm. It's pretty deep for what, 2,000 words? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's It's really deep it's very thought-provoking so the final section starts and so he takes that fall sunny list in again and again and again like john henry driving steel until his heart burst like a jockey rolling over the shoulder of a running broken horse he takes the fall and he saves the king and muhammad ali he never once looks down so that's the end of the story and Sonny Liston is a hero, even though he died in this, you know, shameful, sad, broken way. Mm -hmm. And again, the horse comes back into it, the jockey saving the broken horse. Yep. Yeah. He saves it's the almost king, like the... who's Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sonny Liston is the, the unspoken, the unsung hero, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's the, he's the jockey who saved the horse because the horse is the winner of the of the derby right. or the crown right the yeah. horse is the one who's glorified not the jockey so muhammad ali he never looks down as he is he standing on the shoulders of all those who have gone before him, who did yeah. look down you know mm -hmm. <laughs> like all the john henry's yeah hmm yeah, this I mean, really... maybe that's the... <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> so lots of food for thought and no great conclusions. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is a really deep no, no, story. I, I mean, it does kind of wrap up cleanly, right? But it also makes you think. Well, this the narrative of the story wraps up cleanly, but the thematic material is so thought-provoking. You can't just set the story down and go, well, that was nice. You know, because mm -hmm. half an hour later, you're right. like, wait, what about the horse? Well, what did she mean by, so is the narrator mm -hmm. the city or a mobster or, you know? <laughs> so in We're that in sense, one. yeah. Which I think is a sign of great literary fiction, that thought-provoking nature of it. Mm -hmm. So why do you guys think this was published in science fiction uh, first in a science fiction anthology and then in a science fiction magazine. So it was, uh, the theme of that one was like speculative. So they had science fiction and fantasy stuff in there and it was all about like speculative fiction. So maybe she messed with the events of history somehow that I'm not aware of. That's mm. what I thought at first. Mm. Um, also like showing Sonny Liston's death from the inside of it. Nobody could possibly know that, mm -hmm. assuming that these are how the events transpired in real life so she's showing something that that is speculative right she's speculating on how he mm -hmm. died uh, and i think that's why it was included originally um but apex magazine where it was reprinted where i found it online um is also a speculative fiction magazine so they publish science fiction and fantasy so hmm. that's my only guess because you're right it does like s seem very literary but it's yeah also <laughs> i would call this literary fiction for sure so mm. i thought it was interesting that it twice appeared in sci-fi speculative journals yeah. and plenty well, of fiction is something. speculative regardless of the genre so it's right. not you know yeah it's just a bucket to put it in so that people can find it <laughs> right <laughs> well and i mean if you take that jackie being the soul of las vegas thing really seriously then that yeah. changes it a little bit also she's known as a as a sci-fi writer so i think mm -hmm. that you know 
maybe that's why she was asked to be included. And they were like, mm-hmm. oh, well, we know your work is good, so we'll just uh, fudge a little, <laughs> little bit. Or that's where her fan base is, and they know that. I mean, there's right. that too. So they knew she would have readers, even if it wasn't strictly science fiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to discount the possibility that there is some alternate history stuff going on that I'm just not yeah. aware of, mm-hmm. um, because I don't know enough about the events. Um, and you know, anything that's alternate history is immediately included in sci-fi fantasy, just just like that bucket, you know. Okay. Just because it is so, like alternate histories of World War II where the Nazis win, science mm-hmm. fiction immediately in the science fiction like overhead category right even though you'd call it alternate history you'd call it speculative it always goes in these magazines so okay that's interesting yeah i know nothing about this history so (laughs) yeah me neither (laughs) maybe that's why well you know like i went on after i read the story i went on wikipedia and started like digging around and i couldn't sort out fact from fiction so Mm. she did a really good job obscuring it Uh uh-huh interesting Thank you.